Ah. We're gonna go see uh, Barbie in 70 millimeter. Are you excited? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Have you has has any of you ever seen a, a film screening in a film? Oh, in like proper. Yeah. I guess besides Maybe. Versus the early 2000s. Yeah, I think in some of the local theaters that uh, in Kitchener, where I'm from, had had uh, like old school projectors, but I think that's just yeah because that was the only technology available to them. Oh, true. We're talking about uh, yeah. So I don't know if it was like the highest quality prints or anything necessarily. I don't know the details of that. Yeah, I'm excited. It's coming back. Oh, jeez, no, the bubbles. bubbles. But uh, I've seen. Um, I saw 2001, and I've seen Pulp Fiction in 35 millimeter. And how was that? As a as a like a very big snob about visual quality, it looks a lot better yeah, yeah, than yeah. digital. Oh my gosh! Like the contrast and the way that uh, black levels look it looks so much better than just a digital projection. But this is often that's those those are from like 30, 40 year old uh, film prints. I'm excited to see what a brand new 70 millimeter film print would look like. Yeah, you Allie, know they still you, do film. Yeah, well, it's. I think he did it for Dunkirk. Yeah. Um, to, he likes to use film. No yeah. So I wish that uh, what's it called, the Cinesphere was still open. They probably show it there, but uh, it's closed down. But yeah, we're gonna see Oppenheimer. I've heard. I think the only negative things I've heard so far is that it's it's long, obviously, but it apparently it feels its length. Oh yeah. A lot of scenes of people talking. I feel like this is gonna be like a very dad movie. But I like uh, Darkest Hour, so I don't really complain about those things. What about you, Ali? You like dad movies? I don't know. I, I've, I've only been watching Arrow stuff. Arrow oh. vs. CW, Arrow vs. So stuff all you've been seeing is like months. trashy, like superhero, low budget. It's not trashy, it's pretty good. No, but we, in the grand scheme of cinema. I'm joking, there's obviously. A of, yeah. There's a lot of shirtless scenes. Yeah. Nice. I'm Anyways. not complaining, I'm just. <laughs> Anyways, are you excited, Ellie? 70 millimeter. Yeah. Oppenheimer. Have you seen any Christopher Nolan films other than the Dark Knight trilogy? Interstellar. Oh, that's true. Have that's you true. watched Interstellar? Actually, that's a lot. Yeah, no, I haven't. No. You haven't? I've seen all of his other films, though, but I've I seen Prestige. I watched it on the laptop. Oh, you've watched it on a laptop? Like a 720p stream of Interstellar on a laptop? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Actually, I don't know which. It was probably the Chromebook. Oh my god, that's even worse. That's like a <laughs> like a like a 10 inch screen or something like no, that. I watched it in 2020. Yikes. Anyways, I think I've seen I've seen Following, I've seen Inception, I've seen Prestige, I've seen the Dark Knight trilogy. Only thing I haven't seen is I think that the Tenet. Okay. Uh, and I haven't seen Interstellar, but I've seen everything else. Have you seen yeah, all of those films? Actually, yeah, I've seen all of them. Yeah, I don't think it, I have Tenet on 4K, but I heard it's I heard it's like his worst film, like his worst film. I liked it. So it depends on your taste. It's definitely a, like I think every criticism of it has been valid, but it's one of those that I like his style enough that it doesn't bother me that much. Is, is John David it's, Washington good in it? Because yeah, I don't really he's like really him. Good. Is he okay? Yeah. I think I only liked him in uh, he was in uh, what's called Black Klansman, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I liked him in that. Yeah, he's good in that. But I saw him in what's it called Mary and Marie, Mary and that movie was Zendaya, and I was like, oh, that was yeah. garbage. But I didn't that's because it's a different role, right? Anyways, we're gonna review the movie and review what Seventy Miller is like. So are you excited? I'm excited. Yeah. Barbie, let's go. Bar oh yeah, sorry, Bar we're seeing Barbie. Greta Gerwig's Barbie. Barbie. Let's go. We're here in the I'll get some popcorn. They used, they nerfed this theater. There used to be like I think you can still see the remnants uh, of the King Kong. I actually started to line King Kong statue. But uh yeah, there used to be a lot of cool stuff. There used to be a Millennium Falcon, uh it's the a, one from Star Falcon. Trek or whatever, whatever that's called. Starship Enterprise. Starship Enterprise, yes, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but yeah, now you can just see the remnants of so. Yeah, this sure. is the same with the theater that I used to work at they used to have uh, like an enterprise that had a huge like Batman oh, yeah. and stuff. And then yeah. Was, uh, well, now, hopefully this is a. Are you excited for these have that. shitty golden tins? The one in Vaughn. We we went we went there for Logan. Remember? Yeah, that one. That one still has. Cool it has stuff like a, it's like a museum. Yeah. Oh yeah. Kind of like a bunch of Star Wars. Look at Star That's cool. And stuff, and enterprise. And there. Are you gonna buy me a? Hope popcorn? this popcorn's worth it. All right, we're seated. It's dark as hell. I can't see anything. I can't even show anything, but like the screen is like, whew. we're pretty close. We're a bit too close, but it's only showing 70 millimeter.
We just got out of Baby Geniuses 2, Super Super Babies. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. What do you think? It was pretty good. Uh, but in all seriousness, all seriousness, we just got out of uh, Oppenheimer in 70 millimeter. Oh, IMAX. So, Ali, your first time watching a film in film, how did you feel? Uh, it was absolutely amazing. It was uh, because of the way that we were situated. It was kind of like I was there, like as a third person, immersed in, yeah, watching the whole thing, like in front, especially when we were looking at the beginning shot where there was like a pond and some stuff inside the pond. It was yeah. as if I was just looking down and seeing a pond right there. So it was uh, really amazing. Yeah, this is my third time seeing, I guess in recent recollection, watching a film in film. And it always looks better. I was a bit surprised on the amount of like film specs there were. It wasn't terrible. Like It didn't look like a degraded film thing. I guess because I guess they've been showing this you know, three times a day for the last week. So I'd assume some dirt, grime, some bugs flying in. Uh, but that was interesting. What did you think about the uh, the image quality? Yeah, it looked really, really good. Um, yeah, apart from the occasional specs, but I don't mind that because it, it kind of adds to the, like yeah the the like raw but I never really flavor. I it. never really expected from a newer film, I sure. guess. But that's yeah, it added a lot of grittiness mm -hmm. to it for yeah for how uh, not, but, I want to say clean, but how uh, well made the the visuals are. Yeah. I like the fact that. Well, I guess we'll get into the movie itself later, but I just want to review the theater. We're here at the Mississauga location on Rathburn at the Cineplex. Uh, I don't really recommend getting a close-up seat if you're going to the IMAX because the seats are very loose. So you can't really sit down straight. You have to be at an angle. And when you're at an angle, if you're sitting closer closer than like the back section, your, your neck is going to be all cranked out. So my neck is very tired from having to jut itself outwards just to look at the... Uh, the visuals did you guys have that same experience or just me i actually didn't mm -hmm. mind uh where we sat um but i think it probably would have been better if we were somewhere on the upper yeah, rows definitely. like not not like the bottom like i don't mind being like in the bottom of the upper row but like somewhere in that upper layer it would have been better because we we're in like row d yeah. a b c d there's like a b c d e is the lower ones, and then F up is uh, the higher ones. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I actually didn't have too much issue, you know. Um, but because of the seats, I was like down. I could see. Uh, sometimes I could uh, see the person sitting beside me in my peripheral vision. Really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, overall, um, when it comes to our theater experience, obviously, we this is a very. I wouldn't say it's a niche movie because it is Christopher Nolan. He's one of the biggest directors. I, but I'd say, like, this kind of subject material is very... It's not as approachable as a Inception or as a Dunkirk. Even Dunkirk wasn't as approachable because I feel like so many people mm -hmm. don't really care for World War II movies anymore. Uh, it's probably his least approachable film as, like, just a person who's like, oh, let's go to the movies uh, that he's released in the last at least 15 years. Uh, but for what it was, you know, when it comes to the crowd... I felt bad for them because they did not know what they were getting into. It wasn't as uh, well. Again, we'll get into the story later, but I just want to talk about the just the crowd. Uh, there was this one person in front of me, a few uh, like on the first row that checked on her phone once, which was fine because if you check your phone once, I'm a little annoyed because it removes me from the immersion of the film. Because this is a very dense film. If you're not fully listening in, you will lose a lot of plot, which I did uh, sadly. Uh, so hopefully I can get to watch this again soon. But, uh, yeah, uh, people next to me were a bit of annoying uh, because there's this guy who brought his girlfriend. I think they're, like, 18, uh, 19 or whatever. They're high school sweethearts, I guess. And the girl was definitely not interested in watching this movie. She kept asking her boyfriend questions. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? And obviously because there are a few younger actors in it, like uh, the guy who was in the diary of the wimpy kid he's like oh my god that's roderick oh my god that's roderick and obviously you have josh peck yeah josh no peck was, yeah that's josh. not roderick no you have josh yeah, peck jo yeah josh peck is in it uh who's that oh my god what, what does he do i'm like if you if you are paying attention to the movie it's not, instead of asking questions you'd know uh and then she she brought her own bag of chips ketchup chips which i love ketchup chips but they stink and it was a small packet so she kept going for her bag and it's i just kept hearing this And 
and a lot of this movie is very you know audio based but there's a lot of scenes of just talking and then when you're doing that it really removes me and then sometimes i'll i'll miss out on dialogue parts but for the most part i i wouldn't recommend this theater we only the only reason why we came here was because it was the one of the only screenings of 70 millimeters so i again if you're in the gta i highly recommend where we saw uh the ultra avx of batman or arrow or flash yeah, that has a 70 millimeter no but that has a pretty good sound system no, and audio this, setup. this is one there's two, only two theaters in the entire province yeah that, that do has 70 this. millimeter and this is one of them yeah no but i'm just i'm just saying when it comes to if it wasn't this i would have preferred to watch it in the winston churchill location because there's a lot more respectable people and that kind of stuff so uh but overall i would grade this about a a six out of ten when it comes to the theater experience those seats were killing my neck and um it's just obviously you can't really dictate who comes to the theater but that was my overall experience again we're right next to a mall it's a very we're in downtown mississauga it's very you know bustling with a lot of people a lot of people came to see barbie a lot of we saw a lot of people wearing pink today uh, but thankfully that didn't really overlap into our screening. What would you give this? Uh, so I give it a 6 out of 10. What would you give it? I give it a 8 out of 10. We're talking uh, about the theater experience, not yeah, the movie theater itself. theater experience. Like, I didn't mind it. Uh, you were beside the people that were causing any ruckus. Uh, in fact, the only noise I heard was of you shushing them. So you ruined my theater experience. Well, that was only really once. <laughs> I said, I said, shush, please. I didn't say shush, please. Yeah, and then once. And then the boyfriend caught along and was like, hey, maybe we shouldn't. You know, this is a very special screening, right? This isn't just like a Joe Schmo, Indiana Jones screening and regular. This is like a once in a lifetime. Like when, when, whenever you're gonna watch Oppenheimer, well, opening it's weekend. A, it's a it's a handful of a lifetime. I mean, yeah, I guess it's so. very uncommon that someone would uh, watch a movie in this uh, format. Uh, maybe have a few times in your life that you can watch it. So yeah, uh, really, people who went there, uh, they obviously knew that because I mean the. Uh, this is 70 millimeter, and there's only two, there's not many theaters in the world that do it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, this movie became a huge meme. So there was a, I was a bit worried mm. that uh, some memers would uh, come into the audience and try to, you know, heckle yeah. or something or try to make jokes whenever things got serious because they ended up feeling uncomfortable. But uh, luckily, there was none of that. There was a lot of uh, aging population people here, too. So that definitely helped. It was, yeah, it was definitely a mixed crowd. I didn't feel like it was just like, like I think I watched Darkest Hour in the theater. A lot of old people, a lot of dads. Uh, but here it was like, it was like a, a pretty mixed crowd because again, you have the director of the Batman movies. I think a lot of people are going into that. You got Killian Murphy, who's become a meme now because of Peaky Blinders and the whole Sigma male thing. So that's also why a lot of people came. But uh, yeah, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. It's just, there's a few things. It wasn't perfect. Actually, I'd, I'd say like it's like a seven out of 10 my theater experience for me expecting what i wanted to again the seats were really annoying and uh thankfully it wasn't too annoying the, the people beside me but yeah what about you danny yeah it wasn't too bad for me yeah i agree the seats were a little too loose on <laughs> how far back you could go um and yeah other than like i didn't really notice anyone talking or anything but uh other than the time you shushed the person but Oh, did you hear that too? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no. you're right next to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you got yeah, the. You're not talking to your microphone. Oh, he is. Oh, he is. No, it's it's a it's very sensitive. Yeah. That's okay. All I'm saying. Right. Uh. Yeah. Is a. Uh, um. I lost what I was thinking about. Um. Audience. Audience. Yeah. I think you got the worst of the audience. I didn't notice yeah. much. Um. And uh, yeah, it was. The, other than that, it was fine and. I got a little uncomfortable and sitting there for three hours, but that was just because it was three hours. But yeah, probably. Yeah. So, um, other than that, I thought it was I thought it was good. Numerically, what would you uh, give the theater know, experience? Like seven or eight, probably. Okay. Yeah. So those not, are theater. Not too bad. Those are the good theater over. experience. Overall, I would highly recommend you guys check out uh, any film showing because, in mm. my opinion, I'm a I'm a big nerd when it comes. I'm like Tarantino, where it's mm. like you have to watch it there because I feel like a lot of. It really, especially this being filmed for a specific way, having different film stocks they used to film this, I feel like you get a lot of the appreciation for the uh, watching it in a film print. So, uh, yeah, let's get into the movie itself. Mm -hmm. Oppenheimer, 2023, directed by uh, Christopher Nolan, starring all star cast of a bunch of people. Um, I guess I'll go first. Uh, I will say again, yeah, this is, uh, this is Christopher Nolan's least approachable film coming into this. 
me myself, I'm a pretty big history buff, so I really did appreciate. I knew I recognized all the names because I did a lot of research for this film, and it was cool the representation, especially for how accurate the casting was. I was like, holy shit, he does look who they are. Um, so casting alone is really good. Um, I saw a lot of reviews saying that it felt its length and that it was really long and boring. I didn't find that at all. I think one of the best, um, uh, you know, best positive things I can say about this is the editing was extremely quick, snappy, uh, but it's also kind of its downfall for me, at least. Uh, it it kind of felt like I was just watching like a three, like a almost a three hour long trailer. A lot of, uh, a lot of moments of just loud music and people talking and cutting in between and all that stuff. So it was very, oh. it was very snappy. The editing for me, I would have liked for some scenes to just let it let it breathe let it sit in the in the in the scene but it was very snappy so it didn't really feel its length but at certain times i, I was kind of getting like a bit overblown with the editing performances you can't really hate on uh certain times it felt a bit hokey not from any of the main characters but from side characters i can't take benny safty seriously every time i see him i'm like god damn but um plot wise it's 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 your it's your biopic it's it's your kind of normal what, what what really separates it from the other uh, biopics in the movies uh, movies uh, around that time like Darkest Hour like other movies is its visual style and the way it wants to tell the story that because again it is Christopher Nolan it's going to go from the beginning to the end to the middle to the beginning to the end to explain the end you got to go to the beginning and to explain the beginning you got to go to the end so it's <laughs> it's all over the place but uh, I don't think it's it's breaking ground when it comes to biopics I think if you're interested in the source material and you kind of you already know what to expect from Christopher Nolan. I think it's a good movie. With it comes to that audio mixing, I really did enjoy. Again, it's it's a Christopher Nolan film, so you're gonna get loud music with quiet dialogue. So sometimes you can't really hear uh, certain you know moments, which was a bit detrimental in my opinion because I couldn't really I couldn't really place what was going on, what was going on with who. I, but I guess that was also because I had people talking next to me and I was a bit out of it. So I probably have to rewatch this in another screening but overall i would say when it comes to a film itself when it comes to the i guess i can't really talk about the historical accuracy but as a as a christopher nolan <laughs> fan as a history buff as a person who loves just the appreciation of using film and you know using actual film stocks and the way it's like it's a beautiful film like the the, the visual style is is so captivating and it's so beautiful that even just scenes of people just sitting down is fantastic um and i love that Christopher Nolan is still able after making you know billions and billions of dollars with his box office he's still able to keep core to the voice of what he wants to say and how he's able to say it like I like I recognize some like some like visual shots that he did like in his earliest film following that came out in the 90s and that's when he was like a young director and he's still using that now which is insane uh he's kind of like when it comes to Kubrick where he has a very big uh you know voice when it comes to the visual style and overall i would say you know it, writing wise in the way it's paced i loved uh it, it's not going to break new grounds but you really have to watch this in imax or in a 4k blu-ray i feel like if you're watching this on like a regular screening uh that's not imax or something premium it it, it, it really takes away from the emotion or just the visual storytelling because a lot of it is visual storytelling because it can feel a bit convoluted if you're not really honed in on what's going on who's who i could i couldn't really remember people's names when it came to the certain people uh, if i didn't research it prior i would have been extremely lost but overall i would say when it ranks in the kind of atmosphere of christopher nolan films uh i wouldn't place it at the top but i would still say this is a fantastic outing um and be prepared for some 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 raunchy bits so i gotta see florence Pugh's uh sh 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 shibangas and um yeah overall i would give this Ooh, i don't know i don't want to say the wrong number because i i might it might grow on me but for right now with the entire experience that i went through how how everything turned out i would give this oh god like a strong eight out of ten so uh, yeah, let's go now. Here we have two film graduates. These guys are film nerds. Uh, I'm just a movie buff. These guys actually studied film. So I'll get your opinion next, Ali. Uh, this was a wonderful piece of cinema. Uh, it is. It was very easy for a movie with the subject matter to become a very boring biopic, especially because there's kind of like one peak everyone is looking forward to, that being the atom bomb. And we don't even get to see 
uh, the atom bombs dropping on Japan. You only see the test atom bomb. So, uh, you know, the whole lead up is to that. And then before and after, it's very easy to, for people to just be like, okay, this is boring. It's just a bunch of old people uh, talking to each other and there's like a court case or whatever. But uh, it is able to make it very tense, very mm. engaging. It's like you're watching um, a modern day version of 12 Angry Men. Uh, but with a lot more men. Uh, <laughs> a lot more than 12. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it, it was very easy for this movie to go pretty bad. But uh, because of the directing in this movie, it was phenomenal. Mm. You know, uh, I did notice that there was a lot of music playing for a long time. Usually you don't want the music to be too noticeable. Uh, there's like some nice motifs in there. Like it's a very nuclear sounding uh, electronic soundtrack. But sometimes it feels like the music is just there because they're worried that people will be uh, scared that uh, they'd get... They'd, like bored, yeah. Yeah, or, they get bored because there's too much talking in it. Um, which, I mean, it's, that's more that's probably like an executive decision rather than an artistic decision, which is fine. But uh, that's really only a nitpick from my end. Um, yeah, I think the acting was on point. Uh, I was able to uh, catch on quickly. I did not. I don't know anything about the historical context of what happened. Uh, literally, all my knowledge comes from the memes that this movie uh, yeah. had with Barbie and the whole. You know, because this is like an actual piece of cinema sandwiched in between a bunch of Hollywood schlock. You You'd know, be surprised. I've heard really good things about Barbie. Barbie's directed by. You know, no, I mean, like, there's a lot. There's a lot of memes that are like, oh, Oppenheimer says. Uh, I am. I have become death, what destroyer of worlds, and then he's like, "Oh, did I actually say that? That sounded better in my head," <laughs> or, or something like a Truman. Oh. Truman is like, "I don't like this guy," and then, "Oh, he's behind me, isn't he?" <laughs> you know those kind of memes that are really making fun of how uh, formulary Hollywood movies have become. So it, it's very refreshing to see a big budget uh, movie of this mm -hmm. caliber be released because I don't know. I was, I'm worried that if this movie did not do well, it would have been the last of its kind. Mm. You know, you probably, in the future, you wouldn't have seen something with such a large budget get made like this. But I think out of all the movies that we've seen in these past years get memed to death, like the Minions movie or the Morbius movie, uh, I think uh, this movie uh, is really deserving of that uh, meme clout that it got. And I hope that the people that do watch this because of a meme end up liking it, you know, because it can be, uh, it, as as uh, the Mockbuster said, it can be a, a hard to approach film, and uh, it helps that our frontal lobes have completely developed. Well, yours has, mine has. It. Yeah, it was uh, pretty good. I was able to get the names, you know, uh, Kitty is his wife, Oppenheimer is the main guy, you know, Strauss that. is the bad guy. Yeah. Who's my name's character though? Is a uh, general general Matt Damon. General Damon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> general Matt Damon. I kind of forgot what his. Uh, at the beginning, yeah. I was wondering why his uh, wife was so pissed, or why I was getting his wife and his uh, um, lover mixed up because they didn't. I, I just didn't have an eye for that. They look the same to you. You think Florence Pugh and Emily Blunt look the same? I didn't know what was going on at the beginning. <laughs> right, I didn't know. Like, oh, she's angry because uh, she he's cheating on her. And he's like a woman, ladies' man. Womanizer. It, yeah. He's a womanizer. It's like, oh, wait, now it makes sense. That's why she's so angry and why she's drinking a lot. Yeah, that, that communist lady was kind of weird, but she has, like, some mental health issues. Yeah. And One of the things I want to say is, like, there's a lot... You know, it's, it's a very sensitive microphone. One of the things I have to say is, like, <laughs> I like it. There's a lot of um, Christopher Nolan mainstays, and a lot of those mainstays usually play villains. So whenever they show them, like, I forgot the guy's name, but he's in... He's in um, What's it called? That Denis Villeneuve film as well, uh, but they show him and like he's he's in the Dark Knight as that the schizophrenic guy. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I forgot his name. Oh yeah, but, um, he was Polka Dot he's Man. Also, he's also and, in Prisoners, yeah. Yeah, and like they, uh, they cut to him and they you fuck, see his him, like demeaning great. face. I'm like, he's got to be the bad guy. No, he's got to be the bad guy. And I was like, no, he's the bad guy. And you're like, what? But uh, yeah, Continue yeah. Spoiler that. alert. I didn't even say anything. I mean, it's a historical autobiography. <laughs> yeah, you can listen to <laughs> Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, how should you feel about the editing? Because the editing felt a bit weird to me, a little bit. 
like like I like how fast paced it was, but for certain times it felt a bit like like loud da, 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 like epic music while they're just like having like a court case. It was felt I wanted because I I'm because I, the more like, older films I watch and the more niche artistic films I kind of like it having it sit mm. in the in the scene where it's it's a bit of a silence but you hear you know dialogue and you're able to grasp at it you know for sometimes when you have these really important scenes of dialogue and a lot of like epic music is playing in the background I'm like hey, what's going on here yeah it's kind of Nolan's style yeah it's a, a shtick too. yeah it's like cross cutting between scenes and like trying to keep the pace like yeah. rapid and I, and fire. I, f- I feel that the editor probably knew that oh this is going to get confusing because they made one of the uh times that it's jumping to be black and white so you know like okay this is the present or whatever or this is like a certain well, not part necessarily of- because there's certain mm-hmm. times within the exact same timeline where it's full IMAX in color and then you also have another one that's also in black and white it's a very grainy gritty visual yeah. it so. was like from inside any- the courtroom yeah. anything from Robert Downey Jr.'s perspective was yeah. black and white that was sort of how he's old fashioned keep track of it so yeah what are your what are your final thoughts oh this is a great movie um i don't know it's one of those movies that i would i love oh. but then uh would have a i would have trouble like re-watching it in the future just because i've already experienced it the mm-hmm. first time um but uh i think this is a very good uh Anyways, yeah, and am i getting arrested for no, it's part of but yeah, I, I, this is a, an amazing movie, and I'm glad it's seeing some success. I think the weekend was eighty nine million dollars, and their budget was a hundred million, so I guess two hundred million total. So I'm, I'm sure they'll be able to make money off of this movie. Hmm. Um, I, I'm calling it right now, Oscar sweep, like the way the Darkest Hour did. I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, Killing Murphy. cinematography probably film, obviously film. Uh, what's called sound editing. Yeah. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Killing Murphy. I like. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be an Oscar sweep. Yeah. The 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 entire theater was shaking. So it felt. It felt I, for a second, it felt like a 4D movie experience. Yeah. Just because we were so close to the yeah. screen. And if you don't know IMAX, their 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 speakers are behind the screen itself. So. And usually, I do not really notice the difference between watching a movie in the theaters, or watching a movie home at 4K with the 4K Ultra L OLED TV. Mm. But this is a movie where I actually notice, like, oh, this is, like, high-quality picture. Well, 4K Blu-ray is also high-quality. Yeah, like, I mean, like, um, when you watch a standard uh, movie, it looks worse than watching it at home. When you watch it, when I usually watch an IMAX movie, it's like, oh, this is pretty much the same thing, but now I have to sit beside someone I don't know. But now with the 70 millimeter, it's like, oh, okay, this is, like, an actual different, uh, more high-quality picture. Like, I think maybe when we get 8K Ultra OLED uh, super spicy TVs. Well, because what's it called? Be... Se- 70 millimeter translates to 18K. So you won't even get the full until... But who, how many people nowadays are filming in 70 millimeter? They haven't done that since, like, Lawrence of Arabia. Like but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Dan, do you... Uh, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm generally a fan of Nolan's movies, so this one hit a lot of the same kind of style. The cross-cutting between timelines and the, like, sort of a rapid-fire editing and, and keeping the tension going definitely helps. Um, I was definitely very curious how this was going to play out, because it's, like, sort of a biopic based on, like, a real event and it's mostly like talking in rooms which is not normally what nolan is known for he usually has some kind of action hook to it or like a weird sci-fi idea and um Mm. this one for being a like more like boring type of movie of mostly people talking it was still i'd say slower i wouldn't say slower okay yeah let's see yeah i don't i don't think it was boring but yeah definitely a slower uh type of movie it 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 was still very engaging throughout um yeah i yeah i i definitely liked it quite a bit there yes yeah, some like some sequences like when they first test out the the bomb the way that they like structure that with the the sound and the visuals and stuff mm. was so so cool um 
Uh, but but I did I do think it felt its length a little bit. It is three hours, which is really pretty long. I think what's what stopped me from feeling mm-hmm. what made me feel it was because my neck had to be adjusted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. Um, I think mostly in the way that like. I think mostly in the like structuring of it because it it you build up to the them building the bomb, that happens and then there's like almost, another like almost like an, a whole hour left yeah, it felt afterwards, like yeah. afterwards which was still interesting it just like it almost felt like another whole movie's worth of stuff like happened afterwards yeah which is like because yeah because like, I remember I remember so, I, the first time I checked my watch so much happened mm-hmm. I went to check my watch and only an hour has passed. Right. Cause yeah, so they they much pack out, yeah. so much into the movie, which is kind of cool too. That you're like, like they're it's like we wanted to have the most amount of movie, in, yeah. in here. Um, yeah. So there was like some, a little bit of pacing things and a little bit of like, it's it does. I felt that it felt long, um, but I was still very engaged throughout. Um, yeah. Nolan also does this thing which sometimes is distracting where. Like a lot of it is shot 70 millimeter IMAX, and then it then, goes to 35. And then it goes yeah. to 35 for a lot of scenes. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's not just like one scene is IMAX, and then the next scene is 35. Sometimes it's like within the same this scene, like shot, it'll yeah. cut between. Yeah. Which isn't too distracting when we saw it here in IMAX. Yeah, presented in 70 millimeter. Everything's yeah. so big, anyways, that you don't really notice as much how like what if the frame is a little bit less. But like when you watch it on your TV at home, it's like why is the frame like jumping all over the place yeah, this would be so weird this to one, watch on my phone yeah. but I was surprised how much IMAX scenes were there uh, were in yeah there was still a ton of IMAX, a ton scene of IMAX. definitely yeah um, which I also thought was interesting because it's like a lot of scenes are mostly dialogue and it's like we're gonna shoot those in IMAX also yeah. which is like is interesting because it's usually he saves like the IMAX for the bigger more actiony scenes but because this movie's like mostly dialogue it's like yeah. we're just gonna do do as much IMAX as possible yeah. so it's like in, in, in a lot of interesting choices that you wouldn't see from other direct like this is di- it feels so different from like any other historical like biopic you know just yeah, the I mean, way it's yeah. shot and the way it's like edited and that stuff. visual style yeah. yeah so yeah I definitely really liked it definitely if you're like a, a film bro i would recommend it um any but but yeah i'd i'd uh what i definitely what do you guys like it. what do you guys think about the the aging and the de-aging because i was a bit nervous mm. being so close up being in 70 millimeter that the makeup would be very apparent but i it actually I, really blended really well like you'll see shots of like it was a bit rich seeing killian murphy trying to be like this 20 year old where he has these like really right. big eye wrinkles and stuff like that but when he, as he ages more, you can you can really tell because it cuts from him being like, I think mid twenties, late twenties, and then him being in his like forties and thirties. You can really because because the, the jumps in time. Apparently, that first scene where he's in school is like in the twenties. Right. Well, yeah, because he was a student then, yeah. so he had to be pretty young, right? And then Which yeah, he doesn't to, he doesn't look that young, but yeah, you then jump to nineteen thirty six, and then thirty nine, and then forty two, mm-hmm. and then it's like they're big jumps. And, but I feel like the makeup was really well. Like, when they show old Ben Benny Safdie, I'm like, what the fuck? His, like, face got all bulky and his, like, jaws went out. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Yeah, I thought it looked pretty good. What do you think about the uh, the apple in the beginning of the movie? Mm. I, think I remember was that a, story. Cause I, I, is that a real story? Yeah, it's a real story. Oh, movie shit. Happened. He yeah. really almost killed somebody with an apple. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. I, I, I think it works very well, like, story-wise. It's yeah. like, he is someone who has the capabilities of... Uh, setting someone something someone up to death setting up mm-hmm. a, a murder yeah it's like but when he has the opportunity to Sorry. see it go through he's like no i don't want to do it but when now he's in a situation where he has to make an atom bomb mm-hmm. he does it but now he does not have the opportunity to actually stop it and so it's like that yeah. guilt is eating up at him and yeah, it's, yeah it's a perfect like metaphor for him yeah. being capable of of killing someone but then regretting that decision later on there's a similar line that him uh, that um emily blunt had when it was really in relation to him cheating on her and then uh i don't know if you want to go into spoilers but there's consequences for that happening and then he feels bad about it after and she's like you can't just wait you can't just expect people to be sympathetic towards you because you feel bad about doing something wrong like you still made that choice, and so you still have to face the consequences. Did he learn from it, though? Cause he I said, don't know. That's we'll what see. I, we'll see. 
Yeah, that's what that's what I think is interesting. Is it kind of asks you like, should is he worth like forgiving because he felt yeah. bad about it later? Is that enough? And I think that's yeah. an int- an interesting question. I like that scene where where he meets uh, Gary Oldman's was it Truman, Harry Truman, or some of that? Yeah, I think or so. Eisenhower or something like that. And I think he's Truman. like. He's like, don't put the blame all on yourself. Or he said it in a very callous way where he's like, I'm the one who pushed the button. Right. I'm I, the one who told him. So don't think you're some kind of, don't think this is all on you. Because I also have, because I feel like, mm-hmm. I think they portrayed his Messiah complex a lot too. Yeah. Uh, they didn't really show off his kind of, you know, little, you know, like like when they had that court scene and he was like, oh, like a, like a, like a tuna sandwich or something like that, whatever he said. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't show him that much because I guess they're trying to go... Uh, with his personal style and how he how he acts behind the scenes, because I think when he's talking to a crowd of people, he has this verbose uh, personality behind him. I, I wish they kind of showed a bit more of that to understand the duality of his character sure. when he's you know alone with you know his peers versus when he's talking to a bunch of people that he knows he's smarter than. Uh, so yeah, I like I like. You get your four hour Oppenheimer yeah, cut. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> Nolan cut the four hour <laughs> cut, the extended scenes. <laughs> What would you give this out of a uh, ten? Uh, or I guess out of five or whatever out of ten. Uh, yeah, probably probably like a, 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 a strong eight out of ten. A strong eight. Yeah, it's it's closer to a nine than a seven. Yeah. yeah, it's I find it hard to rank stuff out of ten, but what about I, very, I really like or it. Out, out of a, uh, I guess a letter letter based alphabetical. Oh, uh, then definitely an A. Yeah, but not quite an A plus. What do you think about the editing though? Because I feel like that was one of its, its kind of biggest things that kind of mm. made it what it was, and kind of I don't know. For me, it it, 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 it helped in its pacing on how quick and fast it was, mm. but sometimes I lose track of what's going on. How did you feel yeah. when it came to its pacing or its uh, editing? Yeah, I think maybe. I, I felt it was mostly pretty good, but yeah, that's definitely a, th- a criticism across, I think, Nolan's movies, is that he likes to jump between, like, timelines and and different sequences and stuff. Um, maybe because I was, like, sort of expecting that to, on some level going in, so I was not too distracted by it or not too confused by it, but it was definitely a lot. And it's a lot for, like, to be as intense as it is for three hours, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, it doesn't... Spanning over like forty years. Of yeah, yeah. Life. So the, it's covering a lot of stuff, and and um, and there's a lot in it. Um, so so yeah, like there were, there were some sequences I remember feeling like like a, a, a really tense like dialogue sequence would like wrap up and then would cut to a new scene. I'm like, okay, cool, we get a break, and then it's just another like also yeah. extremely tense dialogue scene. So. Um, yeah, so so there's some some pacing stuff throughout that is, yeah. and some with the editing, I, I'll I'll agree to that. But overall, I still really enjoyed yeah. it. It's, it's it's visual style really. Like if you took away, like if it was shot plainly mm-hmm. and normally, I feel like a lot of its merit would go away. To be yeah. honest, in my opinion, because it, obviously there's only so much you can do with the biopic without going overboard right and, and making like a abraham lincoln and the vampire slayer some bullshit like that but but yeah it's, it's a beautiful film i highly recommend if you're able to check it out in 70 millimeter for how long ever it is showing but this is definitely a day one 4k blu-ray pickup for me because the, just the visuals alone make it at least like a like a seven but i'm giving like maybe like an eight and a half i'm closer to a nine than a than like a seven but we'll know who, who knows after a few uh, after another watch because i feel like I'm on the opposite side where I want to watch it again, just to because at first you're you're admiring its its visual style, and then second time I want to delve into the story, right? Because I feel like that's where, not that's not I'm not saying that's where it fails, but I'm saying that's not the the biggest reason why you should be watching this movie for the story. It's for its its visual presentation and for just how 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 beautiful of a film this is. So yeah, because it's it's a rare occurrence where a director will get this mu- amount of money film it in different types of film stocks and just have the appreciation for it's it's just visual aspect to it so that's why i like it a lot mm-hmm. so you said eight eight yeah. and you said nine and, a half. nine and a half yeah it was um i wish there was some more gore in gore it. yeah like they sh- showing the cost of the mm-hmm. the actual damage that the nukes did but yeah. a lot of people were so uh removed from it they did there was a scene yeah. where they did look at the impact of it but we we weren't seen we weren't shown it we were shown their faces and their reaction to it, so I kind of like that. 
it's it's a bit more, I guess, tasteful in a certain way. But because mm. I don't know how how well, Mr. Oppenheimer was uh, pretty shooken up about it. Yeah. But we only saw him step on one crushed on one smoked body, and uh, he only saw one person melting a bit. Mm. You know, there was no we didn't get to see the shadows. Yeah. So yeah, or, Oppenheimer. I recommend it. I say you guys should go check it out if you're prepared for a a movie of that caliber when it comes to because it's not it's not Inception, it's not Prestige, it's not it's not one of those type of movies. It's definitely one of those textbook movies where you you have to sit down with a good audience. Like it's it's based by base scenario, but I highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah this, ten. this is the kind of movies that's going to have a uh, uh, a video essay on YouTube that's just as long as the actual movie. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. All right. Is that all? Uh, yeah. Uh, yep. All right. uh, be sure to subscribe to the Mockbuster. Yeah. yeah. And me, Zyank Blader, and definitely Danny Duff from the YouTube Duff. channel, Danny Duff. That's right. Yeah, not Danny Duff, but Danny Duff. But a lot of Danny Duff. Is there? There is. Yeah, I tried to, I tried oh, to, to, I tried to at you, you when tagging oh, yeah, me, but at, I couldn't. I'm at Daniel Duff, because uh, someone else took at Danny Duff, and okay. they have, like, two videos on their channel. <laughs> Anyways, let me know down below. What you, if you guys saw, oh, the little cinematic right there, if you guys saw... Oppenheimer, let me know down below what you guys would give it because I'm pretty sure this is a very polarizing film. A lot of people say it's boring, a lot of people say it's whatever, but we really enjoyed it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you like and subscribe. I've been Mace from the Mockbuster YouTube channel, joined by these fabulous people. And until next time, uh, be safe. Cheers. Have a good day, night, evening, afternoon, morning. Whenever you're watching this, uh, be safe. God bless and uh, long live movies. Peace.